Morning. Today we're going to work a related rates problem. I'll read the problem. A balloon rises at a rate of 8 feet per second from a point on the ground 60 feet from an observer. Find the rate of change of the angle of elevation when the balloon is 25 feet from the ground. So I've drawn a picture here. I've got this balloon rising and I'll put a little right angle because it is vertically even though my picture doesn't really say that. Um, it's rising vertically at a rate of 8 feet per second. Uh, 60 feet from the ground there's an observer and we want to know the angle of elevation so the first thing we'll do is label our picture with everything that's changing well uh, the height of the balloon is changing um, I just call it H why not uh, the distance between the observer and the um, balloon is changing and I'm just gonna call it R don't know why um, and also the 60 feet is not changing, so it's 60 feet, that's why I've labeled it as such. And uh, the angle of elevation is changing, the line of sight, angle of line of sight is changing. So uh, we'll label that as theta. So now we'll talk about, or we'll talk about what we're given. And we're given, uh, the balloon rises at a rate of eight feet per second. Well, with our labels here, the uh, rate of change that we're concerned with is dh dt and we're told that that equals 8 feet per second and we want to find the rate of change so we want to find the rate of change at which uh, the angle of elevation is changing when h or the height of the balloon is 25 feet so that's going to be uh, d theta dt rate of change of the angle of elevation equals what? We want to find d theta dt when uh, h equals 25 feet. And so our equation, I'm just going to abbreviate eq, that we're going to use is we need some equation that relates uh, h and um, the height of the balloon, the angle of elevation, and we could either choose to use R and or we could use 60. Now I'm thinking of a trigonometric, uh, a trigonometric function. Now I could use uh, the sine function, the opposite, H over R, but you know, R is changing and, and we might could do that, we might could figure that out, but it makes the process a little more difficult. But if actually 60 is never changing, so uh, my voice just kind of cracked, it's interesting. Um, 60 is, is not changing, so a trigonometric function that relates theta, the side opposite, and the side adjacent, 60 feet, is the tangent of theta. So I'm going to use that. I think it'll come out better. So tangent of theta equals uh, the opposite side, which is h, over the adjacent side, which is constantly 60. So we could kind of, we don't have to, but we could say that our equation is 60 tangent of theta equals h. And actually now we're ready to derive and uh, both sides implicitly with respect to t. And when we do, we get 60, the derivative of the tangent of theta with respect to t is the secant of theta, secant squared of theta, sorry, d theta dt, don't forget that, that messes everything up. And never plug in value, uh, yesterday I was doing a review uh, in person and these people were like, well why don't you, you know, put in 25 feet, well because it'll mess it up. Uh, because this thing is changing, that's just at the particular time. Uh, and then equals dh dt. If you plugged in 25, you would just get zero, and we wouldn't we wouldn't have anything. So now we'll solve for d theta dt, and that's going to equal dh dt, which we have over 60 secant squared of theta. And um, so now we'll substitute in solve for d theta dt. So we know that dh dt is 8 feet per second times 60. And uh, now we need uh, the secant squared of theta. Now I could solve for theta. I could find out what r is with Pythagorean theorem, what r is when um, h is 25 and in fact we are going to do that and then take the arc tangent. Oh I'm sorry. I went, um, I'm skipping a little steps. Uh, we could do that, but, but we, what we could do and what you might want to do is, is find theta and then take the secant uh, of theta and square it. Uh, 
by saying 25 over, or over 60 equals tangent of theta and theta equals the arc tangent of 25 over 60. Um, that's a weird kind of number and then plug that in. That, that's a lot of process. What would be probably easier and I think more straightforward rather than do that is find an equivalence for the secant squared of theta or secant theta. And we could do that by solving for r. And that, it's actually usually we don't we label things and we don't always use them. In this case, we are going to kind of use that. So when with the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to have when h is 25, we're going to have eight, uh, 25 squared plus 60 squared is going to equal r squared, and r will equal uh, the square root of 25 plus 60 squared. I think that's uh, Ooh, I don't have it. I don't have it with me. Um, that's uh, six twenty-five plus thirty-six hundred. I do know that. I can do some arithmetic in my head. Uh, R equals. Um, what are we gonna have? Twenty-five. I think it's forty-two twenty-five. Uh, yep. And then add the yep forty-two square root of forty-two twenty-five. And um, yeah, well, it's not. It's not really that ironic because he says. Uh, Problems are designed to have nice answers. Square root of 42.25 is 65. So the secant of theta is equal to the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So the hypotenuse, when the the height equals 25, is 65. So we get 65 over 60. And then we really want secant squared. So the secant squared of theta is equal to 65 over 60 squared. So I'm just going to put that in there. And I don't have my calculator handy, so I'm going to give you an exact answer and let you. Uh, um, and this will be in radians per second, by the way. Um, this 60 feet and this feet per second will cancel. And. Um, This will be in ra radians per second. Actually, all the all the feet are going to cancel, and you just have to know that theta is in radians. And why? I think I've explained this before. We're always in radians when we're doing uh, derivatives because uh, when we're taking derivatives with trig functions, it's all based on goes back to the fundamental trigonometric limit, the limit of sine of the limit as u goes to zero of sine of u over u. The limit as u goes to zero of sine of u over u equals one, and that's in radians. So that's why we're always in radians. Uh, we could convert, but who cares? Uh, 60 squared over 60, I'm just going to get 8 times uh, 65 squared over 60, which equals 8 times 60 over 65, which, I'm sorry, 65 squared, which we already know is 65 squared is uh, 4, 2, 2, 5, and 8 times 60 is 4,800, and I'm not going to really reduce any more than that, um, although I'm compelled to. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that. That's sloppy, but it'll get you the answer. Rad radians per second. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have my calculator handy, sorry.